Hello and welcome to Dragon of Ice Spire Peak Adventure Walkthrough Guide. Today I will be doing a guide for Axel Home Quest. Axel Home is balanced for characters of 5th level, though characters of 3rd or 4th level can survive its perils if they are cautious and rest between encounters. So the quest for Axel Home is actually fairly easy. All you have to do is kill or drive out all the monsters in the fortress. Okay, so let's dive on into it. So we have A1 Outer Gauntlet. So this is the primary entrance and exit is this defensible passage which is blocked by a sturdy parkouli. Arrow slits are spaced along the walls and murder holes line the ceiling enabling fortress defenders to shoot ballistas at invaders or pour boiling oil on top of them. Characters hoping to get through the double doors must break them down, which takes a single character approximately one hour. Multiple characters working together can reduce the time. The noise created by smashing down the doors is loud enough to alert all the dwarf ghouls in the fortress. It contains three dwarf ghouls plus three additional ghouls for each character in the party. Now, if you kill off all the ghouls here, there will be no more encounters of them in the fortress. So ghouls aren't too bad of a creature to fight. They're only a challenge rating of 1. They have an armor class of 12, 22 hit points. So being if you're level 5, it shouldn't be too much of an issue, especially if you got 2 attacks, you might honestly be able to kill them in one shot. Now they only have an immunity to poison. Now they only get 1 attack action. They have a bite, which is a plus two to hit, and only does approximately nine damage. Now their claw, on the other hand, gets a plus four to hit, does an average of seven slashing damage. Now if the target is a creature other than an elf or undead, you must succeed on a DC 10 constitution saving throw or be paralyzed for one minute. All right, next we got the Western Bulwark. This area contains seven ballistas pointed at arrow slits, a winch that raises and lowers the park coulee and a stone staircase leading up to area 22. There's A3, which is the same as the Western Bulwark, A4, the Mustering Hall. This gray hall has a 40 foot high ceiling supported by four thick stone pillars. A thick layer of dust covers the flagstone floor. In the middle of each wall, Past the entrance is a double door. Arrow slits are set high up in the north and south walls and a small stone balcony protrudes from the wall above the east exit 20 feet above the floor. West Hall, this floor is strewn with bits of armor and the gnawed bones of dwarves who were killed and eaten by ghouls. Lurking in the hall is one ghoul for each member of the party. Then we have A6, 7, and 8, which is the armory, the main barracks, and the privies, which doesn't really have too much of interest, so you could probably skip these areas. 9, Sturge and the Smithy. Standing before two blackened hearths are a pair of rusty anvils, which dwarves once used to fashion and repair their armor and weapons. A fluttering noise could be heard coming from the southernmost fireplace, indicating the presence of a Sturge near the bottom of the 200-foot high chimney. If anyone sh shines a light up there, the Sturge panics, flies out, and attacks the nearest character or sidekick. Uh, and then the next four areas, the Tool Storage, Inner Gauntlet, West Guard Post, and East Guard Post don't really have much of interest except for maybe some ballistas, so don't have to worry about these areas too much. Uh, then we got the Throne Room. Hiding behind the throne is a ghoul with 40 hit points. This undead creature is all that remains of Axholm's dwarf, Castellan, who stayed behind to seal up the fortress after most of the garrison fled. The ghoul is the source of the hall's foul stench, which gets stronger closer to the throne. The hidden ghoul can be detected with a successful DC 13 wisdom perception check. This group contains two soot-scattered ghouls plus one additional ghoul for each member of the party, not including sidekicks. For all other creatures in the hall have taken a first turn in combat, these ghouls join the battle, acting on the same initiative count as the former Castellan. And there is treasure. There's a signet ring worth 5 gold and it unlocks the chest in area 29. 
the secret vault. And again, the next few areas, the dining room, the kitchen, the east hall, and an empty room doesn't really have much interest. The dining room does have a pit that you can climb up or down in that needs a DC 10 strength athletic check, but that's about it. And we got a ghoul den. Characters can reach this area by following the naturally formed tunnel from area 17, the east hall in ruins, or by descending the stone staircase from area A24, the haunted hall. The door to the north has been smashed open and it remains are strewn on the floor. The stench of death and decay grows stronger as the characters approach this room and they can hear the hisses and snarls of the ghouls that layer here. The room contains one ghoul plus one additional ghoul for each member of the party and there is treasure in this room as well. For characters who search through the rubble in the eastern portion of the room find two treasures. A platinum amulet on a thin but sturdy gold chain. This amulet is a holy symbol of Moradin, the dwarven god of creation, and bears his symbol, a hammer and anvil, and an unlocked steel coffer weighing five pounds. The small box is packed with silt, nestled in which is a potion of superior healing. The next two areas, the narrow tunnel and east upper barracks, not too much to discover. Then we got the upper bastion. This large chamber extends over the outer gauntlet of the main entrance and contains many former defensive measures. Arrow slits to the north allow outside light to enter, filling the northern half of the room with sunlight or moonlight depending on the time of day or night. Thick webs are strung between the walls and pillars. Lurking among them are several giant spiders. Three spiders plus one additional spider for each character in the party. So giant spiders, uh, they're again not too difficult to beat. They only got an AC of 14 and 26 hit points. No immunities, so that's good, except they can climb on walls. They only get one attack action. So they get a bite with a plus five to hit, which does an average of seven piercing damage. And then the target must make a DC 11 con saving throw or take an additional nine poison damage. If the poison damage reduces the target to zero hit points, the target is stable but poison for one hour and then there is their web ability it only has a plus five to hit but it gets a 30 to 60 foot range on it if it hits you you become restrained then you must make a dc 12 strength check bursting the web on a success but the webbing can also be attacked and destroyed it has an ac of 10 and an hp of 5. Uh, then there's the west upper barracks not too much here uh, then we got the haunted hall so in here there's a banshee that haunts the east-west stretch of this L-shaped hall. The creature floats in the middle of the hall outside the door to area A27 which is the banshee bedchamber. If the characters flee the banshee presence of their own accord, it lets them go. If they advance towards the undead, attack it or attempt to parlay, it turns violent. Okay, so banshee might actually be more of a challenge here because they're a challenge rating of 4. So their AC is only 12, which is good, but they got 58 hit points. It is resistant to acid, fire, lightning, thunder, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks, and it is immune to cold, necrotic, poison, charmed, exhaustion, frightening, grappled, paralysis, petrified, poison, prone, and restrained. Now it does only get one attack action, which is good. So for one attack, it has cor Corrupting Touch, which has a plus four to hit, and does an average of 12 necrotic damage. Then it has the Horrifying Visage. Each non-undead creature within 60 feet of the Banshee that can see her must succeed on a DC 13 Wisdom saving throw or be frightened for one minute. And then there is the Whale, which can only use once per day. So all creatures within 30 feet of her that can hear her must make a DC 13 con saving throw. On a failure, the creature drops to zero hit points. On a success, a creature takes 3d6 psychic damage. So you gotta be careful with that technique. Uh, Upper East Hall balcony, not much of interest here. We got the ghoul bath. So there are several ghouls in here that gather a total of two ghouls plus one additional ghoul for each member of the party. Uh, the Banshee Bedchamber, nothing of interest. Castellan's Bedchamber. A stone frame bed with a moldy mattress stands in the middle of the room 
covered in dust and cobwebs. Set into the so south wall is a soot-stained fireplace. Sturge's nest in the rubble choked chimney. A total of one per party member. The Sturges attack anyone who pokes around in the fireplace. But there's also a secret door. The back wall of the fireplace is a secret door. A character who searches the interior of the fireplace and succeed on a DC 15 wisdom perception check notices dwarven handprints and the soot on the back wall. Pushing on the secret door causes it to swing open on a hidden stone hinges revealing an area A29 beyond which is the secret vault. All right, we have the secret vault. So there's not much in here except for a chest. The chest can be unlocked with a successful DC 20 dex check using thieves tools or by a knock spell or similar magic. Now the treasure contains a dread helm and a pair of gauntlets of ogre power. And for the last area, the privies, there's not much here, uh, just descends deep into the mountain, passing just east of the tool storage area. So that's it for the axe home walkthrough and I hope it helps you out on your adventure and come back next time for a brand new video. And make sure to subscribe, like, let me know what you think of the video in the comment section. You could also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and watch my live streams at GM Balazar. And I hope to see you again soon. Yeah.